And here's our fourth example in how to solve motion problems in one dimension. Now here's the problem. An object travels a distance of 70 meters, taking a total time of 7 seconds. When it finally, there's a constant acceleration, when the object finally arrives after 70 meters of travel, the object is traveling at 15 meters per second. Assuming constant acceleration, what is the initial velocity when it started? So it is tempting here to right away say, okay, I need my three equation kinematics, which is actually not a bad approach when you start any of these problems. You can say that, well, V equals V initial plus A times T. We can say that V squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A times delta X. Or we can say that X is equal to X sub naught plus V sub naught times T plus 1 half AT squared. And with some combination of these equations, you'll be able to solve this problem. There's actually a much easier way to solve the problem as well, but before I show you how to do it that way, let's just go ahead and assume we, don't, uh, we didn't remember how to do the other easier way. All right, so what can I do here? I am told it's a constant acceleration, but I don't know what acceleration is. So what I could do is I could take the first equation right here and solve this equation for acceleration and then plug that number in here or that equation in there to eliminate acceleration, and then I will only have an equation that has V sub naught as the unknown. So that's the approach. So I'm going to take this equation and solve it for A. So I can say that V minus V sub naught equals A times T, or A is equal to V minus V sub naught divided by T. And take that and substitute that into the third equation right here to eliminate A. And then notice, then I have an equation with all unknowns except for V sub naught. So let's do that. So let's take the second equation out. And with that substitution, we have X equals X sub naught plus V sub naught times T plus one half. And instead of A, I'm going to write this quantity right here, V minus V sub naught divided by T times T squared. Right away, we can make some simplifications. We know that X sub naught can be assumed to be zero, so that disappears. And we know that this can cancel out with that right there. So now, working that out a little bit more, we have x is equal to v sub naught times t plus 1 half v times t minus 1 half v sub naught times t. Now notice that I have a v sub naught t minus a half of v sub naught t, which gives me a half of v sub naught t. So x equals 1 half v sub naught t plus 1 half v t. Notice I can then factor out a 1 half times t, or actually I can multiply both sides by 2. That makes it even easier. So that gives me 2x is equal to v sub naught t plus v times t. Then I factor out a t, so I get 2x is equal to v sub naught plus v times t. I divide both sides by t, so this t can come down here. And then finally, I can subtract a v from that to solve for v sub naught. So I have 2x over t minus v equals v sub naught, or I can write v sub naught is equal to 2x over t minus v. And I know what those are. x is 70 meters, so this is equal to 2 times 70 meters, divided by the time of 7 seconds minus v, and v was uh, 15 meters per second, because that's v final, minus 15 meters per second. Notice that this is uh, 10 times 2, or 20 meters per second, minus 15 meters per second. So I can then conclude that the initial velocity must have been 5 meters per second. And that's a perfectly valid and solid way to solve this problem. But there's another way in which you can look at it. Since there is constant acceleration, I can say that the average velocity, v average, is equal to v initial plus v final divided by 2. Now you say, well, I don't know the average velocity. Well, actually you do, because you can also say that uh, v average is equal to the total distance traveled divided by the total time taken. So that would be x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1, or that would be the total distance of 70 meters divided by the total time of 10 seconds 
oh, not 10 seconds, but seven seconds, seven seconds, which means that the average velocity is equal to 10 meters per second. So now, take a look at this equation. I know my average velocity, I know my final velocity, I can very easily take this equation and solve this equation for the initial velocity. Just multiply both sides by two, subtract v final from one side, and I get v initial, so this equation, then collapse into v initial, is equal to two times the average velocity minus v final. And so that would be two times 10 minus 15, or five meters per second. So notice that there was actually, by using the definition of average velocity and knowing how to calculate the average velocity, we can very easily solve for the problem. Or if you don't remember that, go back to your traditional three equations of kinematics and you can usually solve the problem that way as well. So there's a very good example for you in which you can follow different methodologies to solve a problem like that.